Hello everyone and welcome to Just Finish Coding. My name is Sriram and in this new Scratch game development series, we'll be creating Jetpack Hero. The purpose of the game is to dodge incoming missiles as much as possible. The more time you survive, the greater your score will be. Now before I proceed, I must give credit where it is due. The original code and art were done by the Scratch programmer Reloaded User and I thought that this project was a good fit for a YouTube tutorial series. Rather than downloading the images and music audio one by one, it will be much faster if you use a starter file. If you click on the link in the description within downloadable files, you will be taken to a Google Drive attachment. You can download the file labeled start and import it into the Scratch online editor. After this, you are ready to go. We can head over first to the stage. When the green flag is clicked, we broadcast a message thumbnail. This message won't make the thumbnail show. On the contrary, it is to signify that the thumbnail has just been hidden. We'd want the thumbnail sprite to show when the stop button is pressed and hide when the green flag is pressed. There is no when stop button is pressed in the events tab, so we have to improvise. To go around this problem, we can actually use something that is a scratch bug. Now when the stop button is pressed, all of the graphic effects of the sprite reset. So for example, the brightness resets to zero, and so do the other effects like color, fisheye, etc. In our case, we can manipulate the transparency which corresponds to the ghost effect. When the ghost effect is zero, the sprite is opaque. And when the ghost effect is 100, the sprite is transparent. Remember that when the stop button is pressed, this effect will automatically set to zero, no matter what its value is. So if we set the ghost effect to 100 at the start, the sprite will be transparent during the game, but when we press the stop button, the ghost effect sets back to zero and the sprite shows itself. To do this, when the green flag is clicked, we add in a forever loop. We always set the ghost effect to 100 and stay in front of the other sprites. Of course, we need to add a show so the sprite does not remain hidden when the stop button is pressed. If you test the code out now, the sprite should function exactly as intended. Now we can head over to the UI stuff sprite. When the sprite receives the thumbnail message, we first clear the graphic effects that are already existing. We then switch the costume to background and create a clone. There are going to be three costumes, background, title and play button. We can repeat the process for title and play so that each of the costumes has a corresponding clone. When each of these clones are created, there will need to be three different scripts for each of them. We first have to segregate the clones so an if-then would work. In the first case, let's take the case of the costume being the background. The background has to eclipse the entire screen, so we first have to center it. Next, we set size to 100. The reason we have to specify this is because the other clones have different sizes and the size of this clone will be set to the current size of the sprite at that time, which may or may not be 100. After this, we simply show the clone. All right, that will be the background. Now let's program the script if the costume is the title. The title will be slightly above the center while the play button will be slightly below the center. So we can set X to zero and Y to 50. Now we set size to zero. On first thought, this may seem idiotic. Setting the size to zero means that the user won't be able to see the clone at all. However, what we're really doing here is creating the start of an animation. The clone is going to zoom into the screen in a short period and this creates a great addition. We can create a new variable for the sprite only called animate. This will function as a counter for the animation. Now since this is a private variable, there will be one of these created for each of the clones. So this variable will store three different values for the three different clones. This ensures that we can use it for the title and later on for the play button too. We then show the sprite and go on to the first animation. As I mentioned earlier, this animation will make the sprite zoom in. Repeating the process 20 times is more than enough. Each time we change the size by 100 minus size, the whole divided by 3. 
Think about it this way, changing the size by 100 minus size will just be equivalent to setting the size to 100. Dividing the result by 3 will spread this over 3 times. You can think of the result as changing the size by 33 3 times rather than changing the size by 100 a single time. Of course, this would be a simplification. After each change in size, the additional size also has to be factored into the subtraction. In essence, at first, the clone would change its size very quickly, and as the clone gets closer and closer to 100, the incremental changes get smaller and smaller. The size of the clone will never reach 100, but Scratch rounds it off when it gets very close. Next, we point in direction the sine of 100 multiplied by animate, the whole multiplied by 5, and add 90 to the result. This may seem very confusing and I will explain this in a minute, but first we have to finish the second animation fully. We need the direction of the body to keep changing, so change animate by 1 divided by 30. Alright, now I'll explain the way the second animation works. What we'd want the sprite to do is oscillate left and right about the same position. Oscillations are periodic, meaning that they follow identical paths and keep returning to their end positions. We'd want to express the directional oscillation as a function of the animate variable. As the animate variable changes, we'd want the direction to change as well. To do this, we can put the animate variable into a sine function, which is a periodic function. The sine curve goes from 0 to 1 as it goes from 0 to 90 degrees, then goes from 1 to 0 from 90 to 180 degrees, then goes from 0 to negative 1 from 180 to 270 degrees, and from negative 1 to 0 from 270 to 360 degrees. This process goes on repeating no matter how large the degrees are. As we input animate multiplied by 100 into the sine function, the output would first be 0 as the animate variable has a value of 0 and the sine of 0 is 0. But as animate increases, the value of sine would correspondingly increase until a point and then it will decrease until a point and then it will increase again. In net, the output of this will be oscillating from 1 to negative 1. If we multiply the value of this by 5, we get an output that oscillates from positive 5 to negative 5. When we finally add 90 to this value, the output will oscillate from 85 to 95. The direction of the title clone will stay within this range and continuously change its value and by this we get a nice animation. We can put the second animation's code into a forever loop as we'd want this effect to keep going on as long as the intro screen is open. If you test out the code now, you should have the title working exactly as intended. Okay, so now we can duplicate the title button clone code and just change the costume condition to the play button. The play button should be below the center, so a y value of negative 70 is needed. Most of the remaining code is going to be exactly the same. What we do differently for the sprite, however, is add in a third animation. Whenever the mouse pointer is over the play button, we can make it enlarge slightly. So, we have to add an if-else statement within the forever loop. And the condition is of course going to be if the clone is touching the mouse pointer. If this is the case, we copy the code from the first size animation, but we change it from 100 to 110. As a result of this, the sprite will go on increasing its size until it approximately gets to 110 and we have an enlarged clone. Within the else statement, we just keep the max size to 100. Alright, if you test out the code now and move the mouse into the play button, you should have the size change as intended. The last thing that we will do is make sure that the intro screen exits when we click the play button. To do this, we add an if condition in the original if statement. If the mouse is down, it means that the clone is being clicked. Here we can broadcast a new message called start. After this, we'd want all of the clone scripts to stop as the actual game should begin. Due to this, we stop this script. Okay, so let's make the clones disappear. When each clone receives the start message, we just repeat 10 and change ghost effect by 10 each time. This will make the clone slowly fade and once this effect is finished, we can delete all of the clones. 
And that is going to be everything that we need to do. If the program is tested and the play button is clicked, the clone should be deleted. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.